Well, here we go with our second lesson in section 8.3, lesson 29, and we'll be dealing with vectors. Now, for the homework on lesson 29, there's only six questions, and we're going to be showing. I'm going to be showing you two different methods for solving these problems: parallelogram method and the vector method. And so, I'm going to want you to do questions one and two using the parallelogram method. I want you to do questions five and six using the vector method, and I want you to try both methods. You're on your honor here. But I want you to try both methods because there's two methods for solving these problems. They both work. I want you to figure out which one works best for you. And the only way to get you to do that is to force you to use both methods. So here's the first problem. We have two forces working on one point. We have a 70 pound force at 320 degrees and we have a 40 pound force at 30 degrees and they're both working on the same point. This is an extension of what we finished up the last lesson with. What we're adding is the 320 and the 30 degrees. We will not only find the magnitude of the resultant, which we did in the previous lesson, but now we're actually going to find the direction of that um, resultant force. Well, I always say sketch it out, and here we go. We have a 40-pound force at 30 degrees from the positive x-axis, and we have a 70-pound force at 320. Now, notice I made the 70-pound force about double uh, the 30-pound force, you do, or the 40-pound force. Do yourself a favor and draw these as close as you can uh, you know, without pulling out a protractor and a ruler and a compass, but draw them as close as you can um, to the representation, both angle from the positive x-axis and relative length. So we're going to use a parallelogram method to solve this one. And so I duplicate each of those forces. I take the 40-pound force and duplicate it down to the bottom. I take the 70-pound force and duplicate it to the right. And the resultant will always be the diagonal of that, of that parallelogram. Now we need the angle across from R, and so I add 40 and 30 and get 70 degrees. And remember in parallelograms, the consecutive angles are supplementary. I should track that from 180 and I get 110. So look down there, we've got 70 pounds, we've got 110 degrees, and we've got 40 pounds. Hey, that's law of cosines. So as we have done so many times before, r squared is equal to 40 squared plus 70 squared minus 2 times 40 times 70 cosine of the angle between the two, 110 degrees. I would work from right to left. It's up to you how you come up with this. Um, and I ended up with r squared being 8,415.3. So the magnitude is the square root of that, 91.7 pounds. That's the length of r. And that's relatively what we had done in the previous lesson. Now let's go ahead and figure out that angle from the positive x-axis all the way around to r. And it's down there in quadrant 4 unless we have a really bad drawing. There's a couple ways to get the angle from the positive x-axis. But I, I notice that it's already 320 degrees from the positive x-axis to the 70-pound force. So I'm only missing theta. I marked it as theta in this case. I'm only missing the angle from the 320-degree vector to my r. So if I can find theta, I can just add it to 320 and I'm done. So I decided to use law of sines. The sine of theta over 40 is equal to the sine of 110 degrees over 91.7. And I cross multiply and I divide and I end up with theta being 24.2 degrees. Now, I didn't worry that it was obtuse because I already had an obtuse angle in that little triangle down there. Remember when you have a diagonal and a parallelogram, you split the parallelogram into two congruent triangles. So I did inverse sine and got 24 degrees roughly. Well, I already know it's 320 degrees to the 70 pound force. So if I add the 24 degrees onto it, I end up with 344 degrees. There you go. So our magnitude is 91.7 pounds and our direction is 344 degrees. We rounded off the nearest whole degree on those. And that's from the positive x-axis. Now, I could have found the angle above it and did some things with it, subtracted it from 30 degrees and gotten a negative angle and subtracted that from 360. I just thought it was easier to do it this way. A pretty common combination with the law of cosines followed by the law of sines when you're using the parallelogram method. All right. Well, now let's set up the other method. i got to do a couple of examples before we can get through the next method. So I'm going to use this example in the next example to set up talking about the horizontal and vertical component of each vector. Now, you've been dealing with those up till now. 4, 2, 3, 8. Those are the horizontal and vertical component of the vectors. We're going to work backwards from this problem and find those x and those y's. And I'll show you what we're going to do here. 
So the quarterback releases the football with a velocity of 50 feet per second and angle 35 degrees of the horizontal. Approximate the horizontal and vertical components of the vector. So you see I wrote it out there. There's the 50, there's the 35 degrees, and there's the 50 feet per second. And I want to figure out that vector out there at the football, out there at the end, that x comma y. So I'm going to, that's, oh, by the way, the x comma y is the horizontal and the vertical component of this vector. All right. So if I'm going to figure this out, I'm going to have to figure out what that x value is, which is horizontal, and what the y value is, which is the vertical. So how do we do that? Well, let's draw a right triangle. Oh, there it is. And I've got the x and the y. And how do we find the x? Hey, it's a right triangle. Cosine of 35 degrees is x over adjacent over the hypotenuse, x over 50. Multiply by 50, and I end up with 41.0 feet per second. That's the x value. That's the horizontal. To find the y value, I do the vertical component. I do the sine. That's opposite. Sine of 35 is y over 50. Multiply both sides by 50. I get the y value to be 28.7 feet per second. That's the y value out there at the football. And so my x, y, that's, that's what I have here, horizontal vertical component. My x, y is 41, 28.7. Now, had I handed that to you in the previous lesson and asked for the magnitude, you just squared the x and squared the y, added them up, and look what you get. You get 50. If I'd asked for the angle, you'd have taken the inverse tangent of y over x. Look, you get 35. We're simply working backwards from what we had did before. All right, let's do the previous example, the one before the quarterback problem. Let's do the previous example, and this time, though, let's use the vector method. Let's find the horizontal and vertical component of the two vectors. Let's add them up. Add the x's, add the y's. Let's see where this result ends up, and let's find the magnitude and the direction based off of that. So you recognize the layout there. I went ahead and just kind of estimated where the resultant would end up there. And so we're going to find the horizontal and vertical component of both vectors, and then we're going to add them up to get the horizontal and vertical component of the resultant. And you did this in the previous lesson. You had vectors like 4, 3, and 5, 8, and you added them up. We're going to do the exact same thing here. So vector A, uh, that's one at the bottom there, 70 cosine 320 is the horizontal component of vector A. 70 times sine 320 is its vertical component. 40 cosine 30 degrees, 40 sine 30 degrees is the horizontal and vertical component of the vector up there in quadrant 1. So now we got to get our calculators out and calculate these out. So get the calculators out and you get 70 cosine 320 is 53.6 and 70 sine 320 is negative 44.9951. And you see that 40 sine, or cosine 30 and 40 sine 30 gets you 34.6 and 20. And then we just add them up and we have 88.26 and negative 24.9951. So that gave us the horizontal and vertical component of the resultant. That's because we added the x's and we added the y's. Now, what do we do with that? We square the x, we square the y, we add them up, we take the square root of it, and look at it, 91.7 pounds. And if you remember back when we did this with the parallelogram method, we got 91.7 pounds for the magnitude of the resultant. Now, we need to find its direction. And so we use tangent. And tangent theta is y over x. I go back to... Uh, the resultant, which was 88.26 and negative 24.9951. Do y divided by x, do inverse tangent, you get negative 15.8 degrees. Now we knew this was in quadrant 4, not from the drawing, but actually from the fact that the resultant had a positive x and a negative y. And so I take that 360 minus 15.8 degrees, and I end up with 344 degrees, which is exactly the same thing we got before. And here's what we had done before. This was when we did it with the parallelogram method. And look, 91.7 pounds, 344 degrees. So what we've done here is I've shown you the parallelogram method, which you're looking at now, and I've shown you how to do it using a vector method. And I want you to use both methods on your homework. I want you to make a decision on which method you like the best, and you might mix and match how you do that. Well, let's do a slightly different type of problem. Uh, magnitude and direction of two forces acting on one point are given, and we want to approximate the magnitude and direction of the resultant vector. I'm going to do this one first using the parallelogram method, and then I'm going to use the vector method. Now, notice it's south 17 west and north 82 degrees west. It's a slightly different setup than before, but we'll figure this out. 
And you got to remember how we do this. Now, notice I made the 50 kilogram force, um, you know, about twice as big as the 20 kilogram force. And it was north 82 degrees west to the 50 kilogram force. It was south 17 degrees to the west. And so I've laid it out. Try to do your best to make the lengths relative to each other, given their lengths and also the angles. Don't just put everything down at 45 degrees, as I see some students do. You don't have to pull out a protractor and a ruler and a compass, but just freehand it uh, as accurate as you can. Well, now we complete our parallelogram and we draw in our result. So I duplicated the 20 kilogram uh, force and moved it over to the right. I duplicated the 50 kilogram force and moved it down to the bottom. I drew in my parallel, my diagonal. There's the resultant. And you can notice here that we're pro our direction is going to be southwest something. We'll have to figure that out later. Uh, so we have a uh, parallelogram. We need to find the angle between the two vectors. And then we're going to subtract that from 180 and get the angle across from R. And then we're going to use law of cosines to find the length of R or the magnitude of the resultant. Now for this, I notice that from north to south is 180 degrees. So if I take out the 82 degrees and I take out the 17 degrees, what's left over has to be on the inside. So 82 plus 17 is 99. I take that away from 180 and I get 81 degrees. That's the angle between the two vectors. But I want the angle down there across from R. And remember, consecutive angles in a parallelogram are supplementary. So I should track that from 180 and I get 99 degrees. And it is no coincidence that the 99 degrees was equal to the 17 plus the 82, but I don't want to get into that right now. We now know the angle across from the resultant is 99 degrees. And we do law of cosines. R squared equals, here we go, 20 squared plus 50 squared minus 2 times 20 times 50. Cosine 99 degrees. And you work it all out and you get the magnitude to be 56.7 uh, kilograms. That's the length of R. Now we've got to figure out the direction. All right, so the direction is going to be southwest. Well, that's pretty obvious from our drawing. And we've got to go all the way from the south line to the red line, to the resultant. I can only calculate alpha, the angle on the inside of the triangle. But my direction is going to be south alpha plus 17 degrees to the west, because I've got to get all that in there. So we're going to find alpha. We're going to add the 17 onto it, and then we'll be done with this. So I'm going to use law of sines to find alpha. And I know that alpha is not the biggest angle in the triangle, so I don't care about, uh, I don't have to worry about um, an obtuse angle here. So the sine of alpha over 50 equals the sine of 99 degrees over 56.682. Cross, multiply, divide, hit inverse sine, and it comes out that alpha is 60.6 .6 degrees, which will round off to 61 degrees. So I use law of cosines to find R. I use law of signs to find an angle. It's a very common combination. So alpha is 61 degrees. The angle on the outside is 17 degrees. So I add those up and I get south 78 degrees to the west. Now had this angle, that 17 degrees, had that been in quadrant 4, then I would have had to subtract those two to get that, to get that angle southwest. It depends on how the problem is written. But again, I use law of cosines to find r. I used law of sines to find an angle, and then I just had to stare at it until I figured out whether I wanted to add or subtract. Now let's do this exact same problem again, only using vector method. So I've set it back up again. We're going to go same exact problem we just did, only this time I'm not going to do it using a parallelogram method. I'm going to use the vector method, which means we have to convert some angles from the positive x-axis. Your calculator only understands angles from the positive x-axis. So we're going to have to do some work here. So when we say north 82 west, that's really 172 degrees from the positive x-axis uh, because I had to add the 90 onto it. And then when we say south 17 degrees to the west, what we really mean is, well, what do you have to do there? You have to subtract 17 degrees from 270, and we're really 253 degrees. So when we go to find these horizontal, component, horizontal and vertical components of each of the vectors, our calculator only understands angles from the positive x-axis. So we'll do 50 cosine 172 degrees, 50 sine 172 degrees, and we'll do 20 cosine 253 degrees, and 20 sine 253 degrees, and then we'll add the x's, we'll add the y's, and we'll have the vertical and horizontal component of our resultant. That's the plan. So there's a lot of work here, but basically I just pulled out my calculator and did it. And I ended up with uh, the vertical and horizontal component of vector A, to be negative 5.8 comma negative 19. Well, that makes sense. That's down there in quadrant 
3, it should have a negative x and a negative y. And vector b, that's negative 49.5 and 6 point, or relatively 7.0 roughly. And it should have a negative x and a positive y. It's up there in quadrant 2. So we add up the x's, we add up the y's, and look, we both are negative. Negative 55.4 and negative 12.2. Hey, the resultant is in quadrant 3. It has a positive x, or negative x and negative y. Square the x, square the y, add them up, and I get, well, I'll take the square root of it, uh, 56.7 kilograms for my, for my magnitude of the resultant, which is exactly what we got before using the parallelogram method. So this is simply a method that you keep everything in your calculator. Um, if you don't like using the memory keys, you better write it down to about four decimal places and then add, bring those back. But I think if you use the memory keys in your calculator, life is a little easier. All right. Next, we have to find direction, so we use tangent. I do tangent theta is y over x, and I get uh, 0.2198, inverse tangent, and I end up with 12.4 degrees, but this is in quadrant 3, so I have to add 180 to it and get 192.4 degrees. So that is the angle from the positive x-axis. Now we have to convert that into, I know I'm laughing a little bit here, we have to convert that into, you know, southwest mode. So I need to know how far that is from 270 degrees. So I take 270 and I subtract 192 degrees and I get 78 degrees. So this is south 78 degrees west. And I knew it was going to be in quadrant 3, which means it has to be southwest, because look at your result, negative x negative y. So I subtracted that positive x-axis angle away from 270 and I ended up with 78 degrees. So we got it. And here's a slide from when we did it using the parallelogram method and look we got the exact same answers. 56.7 kilograms and uh, for the for the resultant uh, magnitude and south 78 degrees west. So we've shown you two ways to do the same problems and I want you to do them both on this lesson but as, as we go down the road and as you hit your next exam, you're going to choose, pick and choose which method you like the best. But I want you to use both methods now so you have a chance to make that decision. Well, that wraps up Lesson 29. Uh, remember, there's only six problems on this one. Questions 1 and 2 use the parallelogram method. 3 and 4 are like the quarterback problem. And then 5 and 6 use the vector method. Get to work.